Okay, breathing and bracing. From here, toes on the ground, heels on the ground, and this foot's gonna come forward. Okay, this back knee drops to the ground. Really, you can just do reps and I'm just gonna talk. Hello, and welcome to Casa de Swell, <laughs> where we are bringing you some tips and tricks on how to work out in your home while still getting super high quality work with super minimal equipment. Okay, so today we're gonna to be going over the front foot elevated split squat. By far and away, one of the best bang for the bucks exercise you can get. It's gonna increase your dorsiflexion. It's gonna increase your deep knee flexion strength. It's gonna increase your deep hip flexion range of motion and overall low back stability. Okay, this thing is awesome and has a much lower axial load than something like a bilateral squat. So you can even throw it into your program without super compromising the heavier stuff that you're doing as well. With that, send us an email if you want to talk more about how to put that into your program. We'd love to help you out, but we're going to keep rolling, okay? So front foot elevated split squat. Um, you're going to need something to elevate your front foot, as the name implies. Mm -hmm. Today we have therapeutic exercises for musculoskeletal injuries by Hoagland, printed by Human Kinetics. We're going to use this book because it is the thickest book I have on my bookshelf today. Okay, so with that being said, why might we use this? We're going to elevate the front foot in the split squat any time that someone has limited ankle dorsiflexion. What this elevation of the front foot is going to allow them to do is to create a solid and even contact with the quote unquote ground throughout the whole range of motion. Okay, what we don't want to do is constantly train people to pull their heel up off the ground and drive off their toes. While that might be really good for some athletic movements, it's not good for all of life's movements, okay? We want to encourage positions that allow people to train with a flat, neutral foot that has a proper connection to the ground, okay? Other things this is gonna be great for. Elevation of the front foot is gonna allow you to achieve deeper knee flexion and deeper end range hip flexion as well. So if you're struggling to get in those end ranges or if struggling, someone's struggling to get in those positions in their squat or other bilateral movements, incorporating a unilateral movement that allows them to get in those ranges might just be the one thing that they need to further progress their programming and training without really having to change that much. Okay, so with that being said, a lot of the things we talk about in our split squat video will apply here, okay? We will go over some of it. But I highly encourage you to go back and watch that video as well because there are some beautiful nuggets of information in there too. Absolutely. Okay. Where do you put this on the ground? Somewhere flat that it's not going to move. What we don't want is to position the thing that we're going to elevate our foot on onto that's going to slide. Okay. I definitely don't want to be in the bottom of my split squat holding weights, try to apply a lot of pressure to the ground and fucking slide out of the splits. I am flexible, but not that flexible. <laughs> I definitely don't want to go there unexpectedly. Okay, so with that being said, Lily's going to show you this exercise. I'm going to have Lily hold some weights just for show. Okay. But one thing to note here is that if you actually are looking for a great stability exercise, so we're going to be done on like an off day or as some active recovery. An unweighted split squat is going to challenge your frontal and frontal plane and transverse plane stability so well. Highly recommend doing that. We'll do a different video some other day. With this, things we want to focus on. We want Lily's back leg pointing as forward as possible. Okay? Forward may not be possible for everyone, so a little bit angled out, like about five to ten degrees is fine. What we don't want to have happen is if this foot turns too much, we now have Lily's one femur coming out this way and one femur going out this way. As the movement goes on and those two get farther apart, that's just gonna cause pain. And if that doesn't cause pain for you today, it's probably going to at some point, okay? If you don't have a mirror available, get your phone out or get someone else from around you to use their eyeballs and mm -hmm. figure out where your back foot is pointing. I promise you it'll make a huge difference on your health, wellness, and sustainability of movement over time. Second thing we're gonna think about, we want to position this front foot with this big toe down. Now what I don't mean is gripping the ground with the big toe, okay, it's not like a claw, but the base of that first big toe where it meets the foot, you want this firmly pinned to the ground. When you do this, if you're not used to doing this, you will feel your arc turn on heavily, okay? There will be so much stability in your calf that you've never felt, and you may just feel your hamstrings and butt turn on for the first time in your life, okay? Mm -hmm. If you feel that big toe pulling up, 
That's totally fine. Take a break between reps, figure your shit out, and get your big toe down. It doesn't really matter how long you need to take. Just do what you gotta do and do it right. It'll be so much better in the end. Trust me, don't just run through reps and get done with Do them well. Even if you need to use a kinesthetic tool around you, like putting a quarter or something underneath your big toe so that you have something to keep your brain focused on that because doing reps with bad form isn't worth it. Yeah, if you have a training partner, they can always just put a couple fingers on top of the toe. Just that little bit of downward pressure really helps, okay? Last thing we're gonna think about, something we've always talked about, the breathing and bracing and spinal positioning. What does that mean for this exercise? This means that Lily is not going to flare through here, okay? A lot of people will put their back foot far too back and that causes them to have this huge arch in there, okay? We can see your chest. You don't need to stick it out far. <laughs> From here, Lily is gonna want a slight curvature in her lumbar spine, a slight kyphotic curvature in her thoracic spine, and a slight other curvature in her upper spine. What am I basically saying? She's not a straight board, but she's not super curvy. Her shoulders aren't dumping forward. Her low back isn't flailing out into extension. We have natural curves, not excessive curves. You said that awesome. I wanted to emphasize that that is the way your spine was built, to have those gentle curves. So we're just trying to preserve the gentle curves that are how your body was designed, but not doing it excessively to the point where you put too much load. Okay, so as Lily's gonna go down, we're gonna make a little checklist. Move this like that. Okay, breathing and bracing. From here, toes on the ground, heels on the ground, and this foot's gonna come forward. Okay, this back knee drops to the ground. Lily, you can just do reps and I'm just gonna talk. One thing we wanna think about, a lot of people wonder, what should this front knee do? This front knee should travel as far forward as it can without compromising your equal tension throughout your foot, okay? There are ways you can manipulate this exercise to bias the quads, which would be like elevating the heel and allowing more knee drop. You could bias this to bias the hamstrings and glutes, which would mean keeping more of a vertical shin, okay? And getting less knee drop. You can switch legs, okay? But the one thing we want to do for the optimal transfer of light and movement longevity is learn how to center our mass over our center of our foot. So that's where we're thinking about. For each person, that's going to be a different amount of knee drive and hip flexion because we're all a little bit different. But so long as you're staying focused on balancing the center of the foot, which is right about an inch in front of that ankle joint where the shin meets the foot, you're golden. And you, you can see when I set up just there, I didn't just flop my foot down, okay? I'm spreading my toes, I'm creating good tension and mobility between my foot and what I'm gonna be standing on. And I'm setting everything up slow enough that I feel my spine is neutral, especially my low back. I'm already grounded through the center of that foot, so I don't have to fling myself around to get anywhere. One common thing we'll see here on the bottom is go down. A lot of people have really good positioning, and then they'll come up by flailing your chest up. They'll extend up right there. If this is you, one great cue is think about doing a crunch right before you go up. Okay, if you're gonna throw your back like that, ordinarily you don't want to think about doing this, but think about crunching here as you press up, not that much. Okay? <laughs> think about it, don't crunch. Okay. Go down. Okay, think about crunching, and then go up. That slight thinking about crunching might just be what you need to not throw that low back into extension and compromise your vertebrae and spine. Okay, so right here, think crunch and drive through that big toe. Crunch, drive through the foot. Okay. Because really, we're trying to keep the torso as still as possible so that we can really drive through the foot and the butt to get this movement happening. And when we start driving through our back, or we start going super fast so that we're using momentum, we're just tiring out our spine. Can you turn to the side? Yes. You can put the weight down, I just need you to turn to the side. Nope, just turn to the side. Like, move your feet normal. What does that mean? Stand normal, please. Okay. Okay, so now that Lily's standing here on the side, we're going to show you one little thing. I'm talking about why we don't want the low back to move is because 
the glutes and the hamstrings are going to accomplish hip extension. Your brain needs to know that the hip needs to extend in order to get out of the bottom. If you fire with extending through here, these erector muscles and musculature of the back are going to accept the majority of that tension responsibility, meaning that they're going to take most of the load, meaning your glutes and your hamstrings will not, meaning you may be doing a ton of split squats and getting nothing but back pain and underdeveloped legs. If you really want to grow and you really want to make things stronger, better, and more athletic, this needs to be locked in so that this can do their job. And I just want to re-emphasize that I think people get a little bit confused about exactly where their hip is. This joint is pretty far down on your butt, and this is where we want the movement to be happening from, okay? This is stable. This is where we want to be. One great thing to think about is when you're doing your exercise, so you're doing an RDL, or you're doing a split squat, put your hand right on that hip bone. Okay, here's the top of my hip, but there's the head of the femur. And feel your body move from there. Here's where it should be moving. Here's where your brain might think it should be moving, but I shouldn't be moving from there. Here is where nature designed that movement. Okay? Here is where nature designed the movement. Not here, there. And it is a little bit annoying because you're going to have to be on yourself because if you're used to moving in your low back all the time, the only thing that you get to think when you're doing this exercise is whatever key uh, cue makes you not drop back into that and you repeat that over and over and over in your head so that you can start to make new natural patterns for yourself. Yeah, at Swell we're big on mantras here <laughs> and checklists, okay? My phrase might be different than Lily's phrase, might be different than your phrase. But find that shit and say that shit all the time. And enjoy your split squat. Yeah, and enjoy the split squat. <laughs>